friend. It is great speaking with you. Where are you back here in Canada or are you still in Miami? I'm back in Canada. I just got back uh, the weekend. How was Miami, man? Unbelievable. Like, I mean, look behind you. Um, <laughs> quite the experience. Uh, I'd never been, you know, to Art Basel before. Um, I've never had a show before. I've never been on display in the public other than the McMichael. And, you know, I've been in galleries around here and there, but like, this is like, not only is it the biggest art show in the world, you know, it's, it's like a prestigious thing. It's like, it, like, I never considered myself an artist. I just paint when I'm not in the studio and I just paint for myself and it wasn't really supposed to be like a thing, you know? So I'm blown away by all the love I received. Uh, that was my first mural. Um, so for those of you who don't know, I was at the Clevelander on South Beach, which is like at Ocean and 10th. So it's right across from the main Art Basel tents. It's right on the beach. The Clevelander is a legendary spot. Shout out to the Clevelander for all the love. And they let me paint a wall. So I did a wall, uh, 50th anniversary of hip hop this year. Uh, me being a hip hop producer and engineer, um, and artist, I guess. I don't know if I'm a hip hop artist, but so I painted a tribute to Miami's hip hop icons Rick Ross, Uncle Luke, Two Live Crew, DJ Khaled, Trina, Trick Daddy, and Pitbull. Of course, there's so many people I miss, but I only had so much wall space. So um, this was a style I do. I usually do one person. So this was the first time I did six people at a time. I was a little overzealous, but I, you know, I had so much fun and knocked it out the park and it was amazing. People showed me so much love while I was making it and after it was done. So. Now, now did I see that you also had, even though this is a combination of amazing iconic artists, you did do individual pictures. I thought I saw a video. Yeah. In that my was, gallery, yeah. there was, yeah, that's one of my styles that I developed as I do. Um, I, I've been doing rappers or producers and then with the colors, usually it's, I do the color background first, it's abstract. And then I put the yeah. image on top. Right. So there was some in the gallery, the um, NFTs I did with Eric Sermon uh, were in this style. Um, so it's been something I've been doing for a while. People like them. A lot of people buy them. So I chose that on purpose. But the other cool thing that happened that I didn't mention there was as I was painting this mural before I got to the color part, Love and Hip Hop Miami was shooting in the hotel next door where I was staying. I heard my, about this. <laughs> yeah, my my day to day manager Charles Lewis was got in the shop by accident and brought them over. So they they not only shot me two days in a row shooting me painting this mural they went up and shot the gallery so i don't know what episode is going to be on hopefully i don't hit the cutting room floor and i'm on the show but i'm i would just assume that the show was about art basil that uh, episode is going to have art basil in it so i mean that was a whole other cool ass layer to the um to this piece yeah. Right place in the right time. How you 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 already mentioned about how the the creation starts off, but how do you go about creating your colors? Why are the colors that we see here um, contrast to the, if I can use the terms black, white, or different shades of gray? Grayscale, yeah. Well, yeah. originally when I first started doing it, the the faces would be anywhere you see white and grayscale, you used to have color. And I started doing them with the grayscale and the color after a time because it started to like, I was, I started doing grayscale for a bit and I started playing around and I was like, oh, I kind of like both because the shadows, you get the depth of the, the faces and stuff like that, which I wasn't getting with just a straight color. And sometimes you have to play with it after. So with this, I didn't want to go too far off. I want to make sure you knew who it was. I wanted to make sure it was a good combination. The colors are all random, really. Um, and a lot of times, like this particular one, I was spraying stuff at the end, like just changing stuff, because I have to love it. It's important for me to love it. And if I look at it and something bothers me, I, I can't really stop until I fix it. And some people don't even notice. Some people, ironically enough, when I before I got to the color, 
funny story. I'm there, it's sunny, it's maybe day three, two. I'm painting. In walks red one from the rascals. <laughs> <laughs> And he told me, just leave it. It was dope. Leave it as it is. And and he saw how they're going to be. But yeah. it did look good just in grayscale. It was really a hard decision to make. I like both. So it was cool to run into, like, a fellow Canadian hip-hop uh, icon. I'll call him an icon. You know, um, I, I I always love running into Canadians in America. So that, that made it funny. And I hadn't seen him in a while. So it was dope. We got to reconnect, all that. But, you know, I'm really happy with the way that the piece came out. Um, if you do end up at the Clevelander, please take a picture and tag me. Uh, it's david.strickland on Instagram. Um, yeah. Myself, I didn't really have a plan coming in. I came up with the concept in 20 minutes. Um, I went online and found pictures of everybody. So the, the, I'll, I'll give you the process. Briefly. Yeah, please. I'll take a picture and then I have to make a silhouette of it. Before I can do anything, I have to determine because not every picture translates in, into a silhouette. Like just some just don't work, but some work really good. So I, you know, I had to pick all the pictures of everybody. And then I because it wasn't one person, I had to figure out where everybody was gonna be. So that's where I put, you know, I went into Photoshop and kind of just moved my work around and I put Luke in the middle because everybody owes Luke. You know, everybody goes back to Luke in Miami. But Luke also saved us all because remember he challenged the Supreme Court on yes. censorship, and they were they were trying to shut hip hop down. And that's so long ago that people don't people don't remember, or people are too young to even know. Like like people were asking me, you know, it's so funny because I'm I'm 50, I'm down there. People think I'm young, and people are asking me. Because I'm not from Miami. What do you know about Uncle Luke? And I'm like, dude, <laughs> I bought the first 12 inch in 87 when it came out. I was one of the only kids probably bumping that in his car. You know, hey, we want some. And he had some, you know, so many timeless hits. Um, yeah. They were pioneers, not to use that word, but like they were architects of that Miami sound, right? And I, the funny thing about it was when I was sitting there, so you got to set the scene. I'm in Miami trying to come up with a Miami piece. I turn on the TV, it's a hip hop um, history show and it's about Uncle Luke. So I learned all this stuff while I was coming up with it at the same time, which made it with like all the signs and the stars aligned. And I was like, oh, okay, this is perfect. You know, this is perfect for me to, um, to sorry, somebody's calling me, I gotta get rid of them. Somebody's perfect. This is perfect energy and a perfect vibe for me to be doing what I'm doing right now. So I had no issues, no stress. I just had fun and it came out amazing. And being my first mural, I was like, you know what, dude, you really delivered and I was proud of myself. And that's all I need really. I don't need kudos from anybody. I'm just, as long as I make myself happy at the end of the day, that's all that matters. So that's really dope that you got that up there. Well, look, man, we are gonna give you your flowers and yes, uh, my family, we do have the uh, Me So Horny 12-inch and album vinyl. Make it clear, vinyl. So Mine, very, yeah. very, yeah, very, very important. I'm curious, has Uncle Luke or Pitbull, has anybody seen this yet and contacted you? Um, I'm one of the photographers at the Clevelander shoots for Ross, and he sent it to them. Uh, no, nobody's contacted me. I tagged everybody. I don't know anybody. Personally, I think I have a Rick Ross credit somewhere, a song, mm. but I never actually, usually it's, you know, I'm more, I'm, as I got older, I, I mostly mix. I don't track so much. Like I used to track all the time, but tracking, right. tracking, recording vocals is kind of like a rite of passage as an engineer. You got to become a good recording engineer before you don't just start mixing. Right. Um, I I'll track if it's depends on who it is. I would definitely track Rick Ross. You know, but I have never met Rick Ross, never in the studio. I He has worked with, you know, Eric Sermon in the past. He does know, like, there's a lot of mutual contacts, but we've never actually met. And I've never met Cal, and I've never, I never met any of them yet. So it'll be dope if they even take a picture in front of it. I'm sure it's going to, uh, yeah, it'll get around. Miami's not that 
you know, like it's, it's big, but I'm sure like if I lived in Miami, I'd be going to South Beach all the time. So it's probably something that might, if they don't get told, they might stumble across. Who knows? Uh, I'm letting it be organic, you know? Is there a chance you're going to have an exhibit here in Canada and Toronto somewhere? That's a good idea. Um, I probably should, eh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like it. I put that and put that in your head. <laughs> yeah, I, I I mentioned to the McMichael about uh, my desire to do a symbol series exhibit there one day. Um, I'd like to do something where I could paint for the exhibit as well. I've never done that. I've never really taken this as like a lot of people. This is what they want to do. Mm -hmm. For you know, this is what their passion is. Obviously, it's a passion of mine, but. It wasn't really a plan, so I ne I never really took into consideration all the things that you could do. Or, do you know what I'm saying? Like, it. I never took it serious. Now I'm starting to take it serious. Like, oh wow, okay, maybe this is what I'm supposed to be doing too. Because I do love painting. I do enjoy it. I one thing I love about it is, I could just do it by myself. There's no outside. Like my new album coming out next year is an instrumentals album. It's called Foundation. Um, it's the first time I've done something just all by myself. You know, I'm not rapping, I'm not singing, it's just instrumentals. But I found similarities in that to painting where I didn't have any outside influences, right? And nobody could tell me if it's right or wrong. And it let me breathe a little, a little bit. Um, so, you know, I just want to, like, try new things. So I'm not against it. I'm not so against it. So you don't do you know how much your your art is worth? Some I've had I I do and I don't. I've had pieces sell for five, seven, eight, ten thousand dollars. Um, I've had I I also try to keep prices low sometimes. Sometimes people can't afford that, so uh, I'll depending on the piece, I'll let it go for cheap. Also, shirts are a good way. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to ask you next. Are the is there a chance that the artwork, like what we're seeing behind me, will it be a T-shirt? Well, I've been doing shirts on my own. I've been trying to develop my own manufacturing facility, but like it's hard and expensive. And I've I've always wanted to get like if I can get a deal with a company where they're just taking my images and licensing them and and get you know like I could do something like that. But I haven't really ventured out into looking for it because that is a good way for people to still have the art but like yeah. say it's a big expensive piece and you can pay 20 bucks i mean that's way better i mean this is actually a, a logo for the level up dispensary on six nations so i mean this piece is being worn all over the place now and that's just one piece right so i mean man that's a good way to do it i'm not really i haven't really been into prints um like i said it's nothing i really thought i could actually like i was just painting to put stuff on my wall so it wasn't supposed to be for everybody else. Just people were like, oh, this is great. So, I mean, if people like it, I'm going to do it, right? So, I mean, I, I'm really, I'm just satisfied that people like stuff enough to buy it. You know, that's enough for me. It would be dope to sell stuff for $20 million. I think the, the highest selling painting at Art Basel sold for $20 million, which well, is pretty um dope. Yeah, no, definitely. Look, before we wrap up, two things I wanted to talk about. Number one, uh, something that happened last year, around the beginning of the year, if you remember uh, what Drake did in bringing all the uh, iconic hip-hop artists together and that great show that happened over at History. And yeah, History. and if you were there, weren't you? I was not there. Why weren't you there? <laughs> I, was, I was screaming out. I was, in, I was in Long Island at the studio with Eric Sermon. I had somebody there. And I was watching, and I kept yelling and, and texting people because nobody mentioned Gadget's name. Nobody gave Gadget his flowers because half of them people were there because of Gadget. I was yeah. cursing everybody that night. I didn't care. You didn't have to mention me. I kind of felt like I missed out because I wasn't there, right? Personally, I was like, ah, oh, damn, this is my whole career. I should have been there. But yeah. I wasn't. I didn't know about it. Nobody told me ahead about the show uh. so I could plan. I wasn't invited, let's say. Personally, nobody said, hey, be at the show. Um, so I, I was just doing what I was doing. 
I did get to go on tour a bit in the summer, which kind of made up for a bit, of, but it was kind of different because it wasn't that show. I did want to see that show. It would have been epic. Like, I also missed the Hip Hop 50 at Yankee Stadium, but that show was, you know, that show was my career. But for me, it wasn't about me. It was about, I'm not there without Gadget. Yeah. A lot of times people aren't there without Gadget. People don't really understand the sacrifices myself, but more Gadget made for music, hip hop, reggae, and R&B in this country and gave people careers when he could produce circles around all of us. Like, like people don't, I can't even stress it enough. Um, like, I'll give you a perfect example. Please. I did the Brian Lewis record at Soundfield. Soundfield used to be in the back of the Now magazine. I was tracking that album uh, while I was doing the Ghetto Concept album at, the, at Soundproof, while I was also working, no, I was doing, yeah, while I was also doing Jellystone's album at EMI, and I was probably doing a couple other albums that summer, okay? Wow. But the point is, uh, I got to work with Dre and Vidal, who just came from doing Butterflies with Michael Jackson. Like, the knowledge these guys had. So here I am. Yeah, I'm in a, I was in my 20s, and I was really, I don't want to say in my prime, but I was like, you know, I could go, right? And Gadget could have just done that album himself. He could have wow. tracked it. He could have mixed it. He could have, but he, he gave that to me and Lindsay. Uh, shout out to Lindsay, who we, we we did most of the work and and you know he could have took and that's how it is. There's all these projects that I got to work on that he could have been selfish and just took the work and money himself. But he would invest in people, and that's really my point. Is so him and I would invest in people's careers. And then, you know, it's, sometimes it feels like we get forgot. We, you know, and I don't look at it like that way. I'm humble. I don't need people to big me up to uh, feel good about myself. But I wanted to see them give him his flowers. And I'm still happy they give a lot of people got their props. You can't get everybody, but he's kind of important. He should have a star on the Walk of Fame, Canadian Walk of Fame, whatever Hall of Fames we have for music, he should be in there. Um, and yeah, that's why I wasn't there. I should have been there. Had I known, I might have made an appearance, but it is what it is. I got to go on tour a bit with Drake in the summer, and that was a blast. Um, but you know, I'm doing other stuff. I'm, I'm, I, I fell in love with Miami, so you know, okay. The last question I want to ask is, and you know, I'm got to, I got to go to wrestling. You know, I got well, to go there. That's what I was gonna say before we go. We got yeah, to gotta go there. To... So tell me something. But what do you think about CM Punk going to the uh, WWE? Because my personal thing was, even though he was having all the frictions with the uh, the elite, who right. now they're not even around because of right. injuries and walking away. Do you think it's a good move for him to go to the WWE? Because me personally, even though he had all those problems in AEW, I think. He's a better fit in AEW than he is in WWE today. Yes, but I, I listen. I, I was sitting when when I popped so hard when he came out of Survivor Series because my whole the whole night because by the time this match was over, I was yeah. like, ah, shit, they didn't do it because mm -hmm. I know they can, and it wouldn't surprise me. And I loved how they pulled it off. And <laughs> I was sitting there going, man, Tony Khan, what are you doing, man? You lost your top three stars because it's a, w, a WCW scenario. Who yes. WWF, WWE fans aren't paying attention to the other wrestling. So some of them don't even know CM Punk came back or care. So this is like the first time all over again. And it like, it proved the point that, okay, you thought they weren't firing back shots. You thought there wasn't a war. It doesn't have to be on Monday night. But you start poaching my talent, dude. What do you? Okay, first of all, let's back up. Okay. How are you signing CM Punk or not? Not putting a non-complete clause in these contracts, knowing that these guys have one when they leave. That should be number one. Yeah. Okay, number two. Whether you got experience or not, there's a lot of mistakes that have been made. That he okay. Here's the bottom line: Punk just proved them all right. He just proved his point. Proved him, I don't need you guys. I don't need to be here. When he said I'm working with kids, I'm like, yeah, they don't want to listen to you. 
go back to the big leagues because that's how we're going to look at it. Okay, you now you're keeping yourself secondary. You got three shows right now. You gave the guy his own show, and then you fired him. Like, dude, that I'm so happy. I just laughed, and I, I, you know, I was excited because I was happy to see that. Man, I was cheering for AEW. I got the belt, bro. Like, what are you guys? You guys are messing it up, man. The, I, the lack of storylines. You know, they could like. It's just I'm just happy to see uh, WWE taking making wrestling exciting again, True. taking these guys back. And I can't wait to see Jade Cargo debut. I'm glad they're taking their time. You know, she had so much potential and they're going to, they're going to make her killer. So yeah, man, uh, thanks for bringing up the wrestling because punk man, dude. Oh, oh wait, 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 we're, we're, we're not done yet. We're not done okay, yet. Good. What about the rumors that we're hearing now that uh, WrestleMania 40 may be Roman Reigns last match because. Oh, I've seen that. Yeah, so there's a chance that that might be it. And if that is the case, who do you think should take the belt? Should it be Cody taking it from him? As it should be now? Cody. It should be Cody um, because of the last year. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you could have, like, Seth's, I'm I'm over Seth being the champ. I know they I didn't agree. want to give him a short run because it was the first championship. But please let somebody beat him now so we can move on. Give it to Cody. He deserves it. If you're not going to give it to Cody, like the best thing, here's the best thing they could do. Mm -hmm. Have Punk. See, the, the, the problem is they, they, they have Punk saying, I'm going to win the Rumble. And then what, you're going to challenge Seth? Yeah. No, that's not what should happen. You need to have, because let's keep this in perspective. CM Punk's the, still the AEW champion as far as I'm concerned. Nobody beat him. True. Yeah, they had a tournament. Now you have the AEW champion about to fight the Universal champion. And if he's going to win, let him beat Roman Reigns. Let Seth lose to um, to Cody Rhodes. Let's have a... I don't want to bring up certain people's names. Let's have a... Remember that year when everything was right again? When Eddie won and the other guy won? Yeah, 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 yeah. They yeah, yeah. both got their titles. Let's have a yes. moment like that without having any having it stained later, you know, like I don't want to, I'm not going to say his name. Um, but that was a good moment uh, where, you know, we need one of those. We've had a heel champion winning without clean pinfalls the whole time. I give him more respect if he won without always cheating, but okay, we we're fed up. Let's get a. We need, we're ready for a baby face, right? So if we, we get two baby faces at once, that's a good call. You start the new, season because now i kind of think that wrestling season begins the day after wrestlemania yeah and the end of the season is wrestlemania that's the championship like the super bowl right i never really thought of it in terms like that before but okay let's start the year off with a, some fresh heels because i don't i like cm punk facing stone cold but i don't think it needs to have we need to have this before that right yeah. so i don't know it's a tough call but What's the what's the other way to go? Who's going to beat Roman? It's got to go the other way around. No, I, I agree with you. I think Cody should take it from Roman. Right. But I think. But you got um, them both see, on Raw. But I think see well. Remember as as you remember you you do see Cody from time to time on, on SmackDown. SmackDown. So I think they're trying to make it comfortable for him to be right, over there. Right. Right. But you I also think that yeah. But I think also because CM Punk did leave, I don't think CM Punk should take the Universal. I think Punk should take the world. The world. Yeah, and yeah, it makes more sense there. It One more question. Sense. Going back to AEW, who do you think the devil is? That kind of pissed me off. I was hoping it was CM Punk and he didn't get fired. <laughs> that would have been great. whole point is like, okay, you fired him. If they didn't, if they didn't hire him, mm. You could stand on it. Yeah. But now they just hired him after purging Cody and Jade. You look like a idiot. Okay. You look like a idiot. <laughs> They're proving everything right. And now you got this devil catastrophe. It can't be Wardlow. <laughs> it's almost got to be somebody new, right? Yeah. Somebody big enough to be like, oh, snap. Right. Um, it can't it be better not be out. Jungle Boy. That's the one thing. It better no, not be Jungle Boy. And that's the other thing. Are they going to drop the ball on him? Is it going to yeah. be whack? It, yeah. You've hyped it up so much and so long, it can't be whack. So 
if they don't pull the trigger at the next pay per view is coming up soon, right? Yeah, yeah. If they don't pull the trigger on that storyline soon, it's going to get whack, and it's going to deflate if it's not over the top, right? I can't think of anybody who's not there who it could be, right? But they have a habit of doing lame stuff, which is they're losing me. Like I just watched Rampage the other night for the first time in a while. Mm -hmm. I was watching everything religiously, right? Then when I started seeing Collision going, I like WWE smart. They moved the pay per views to Saturday. Those guys moved to Sunday. Now you got a pay per view going up against Collision. Nobody's watching Collision versus a pay per view. Like you guys are, like it's it's getting. I'm like Tony Khan, give me a call, man. Like you know, like <laughs> like, like I can help you here because it's like like then they got rid of Kevin Sullivan. The only yes. thing I can think logically is Sting's going to be the producer, or like like the Booker. Like I don't know what's going on. I'm not a backstage guy. Um, I'd love to work for a wrestling company. That would be a dream come true. I almost got a job in the WWE. Um, I don't think I've ever told this story. So rest in peace to um, Tommy Uzo. So when I was back mixing my album, I brought, you know, Tommy was a mentor of mine. Tommy, if you don't know who Tommy Uzo is, Google him and your head's going to break a little, the amount of music he did. Um, he was uh, the head engineer at Mirror Image um, in Manhattan. And those guys helped me a lot when I was coming up. And so I got Tommy to mix on my album, on the Death Squad song. And I kind of hadn't seen him in a while. And I was like, Tommy, what are you doing now? And he goes, oh, I'm working at the WWE. And I was like, what? And he goes, yeah, he's mixing the, he was mixing the cartoons and TV shows and stuff like that, engineering. And they have a total different system. They're not like using Pro Tools. So I was like, yo, I want a job there. Let me be your assistant. And he's like, word, I could, you know, I'll train you to do take over from me because he's, Tommy was getting older, you know. He's about 10 years older than me. And so we kind of made a plan. I was like, yo, okay, we made a plan. And I was like, how'd you get that job? And he said, I pulled the Gordo. I just showed up and never left, which is kind of what I do. So I was like, oh, my God, this is perfect. So I was so excited I never told anybody. Sadly, Tommy passed during COVID. Right. And that broke my heart that he passed. But I mean, that kind of like stopped that right there. Then in my tracks, he was my plug. And, um, yeah. you know, I miss him so much. He was such a wealth of knowledge. He was such a nice guy. He was so loved over the WWE. It was, they didn't know. A lot of those guys didn't know. Like he did Red and Math. He's done EPMD records. You know, Michael Jackson, like his list is stupid, bro. And yeah. I learned so much from him. So it was like, it was like a dream come true for me to be like, oh, I could segue to music, to just mixing like t like TV and doing doing show like that would have been amazing. Like I would have been so because I I'll tell you before we go, yeah. When I was in Atlanta, uh, Eric used to have this. I used to record pay per views and I would put them on DVD from mm -hmm. the TV, right? So I put the DVD. I took a match. I put it in Pro Tools. It was three man commentator. JBL was one of them. We're talking like 2008. Okay. <laughs> so I went through, I cut out all the audio where the third commentator spoke. And then I did all the sound effects in Foley, put it in. Ouch. And then I recorded myself as the third <laughs> commentator. <laughs> right. I mixed it down the match, burned it to a DVD and, and mailed it to the WWE trying to get a job as wow. a commentator. Never heard back from them. But it's, I did such a good job. If you watch the clip, most of my friends wouldn't know. They're like, why you got me watching this match? I go, it's me, bro. Like, yeah. So I always wanted to try that, you know, but I've never, you know, you know, I obviously studied radio broadcasting and that, but I've never really got the opportunity to, you know, fluke into that kind of job, which would be amazing. I think I'd be good at it, um, you know. You can dream. That's just a dream of mine. Uh, I'm going to keep painting and engineering in the meantime. You never know, man. You never know. Look, brother, we're going to wrap this up. I got to say, thank you so much for making time to speak with me. Congratulations on this. Thank and you, we got to talk again in the new year. All the best over the holidays, man. And it's definitely all the best in 2024. Yes, you too, sir. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Yeah, new album's coming. I'll be back. <laughs>